Hello and welcome to my brand new series brought to you by myself, DJ Argue and Subtle Radio. Today, we're talking about all things underground. I've got two pioneers with me. I had to kick it off like this. We've got Dread D and DJ Slimzy. What's going on? Oh, man. What's happening? Yeah, hey, man. Good? Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Two pioneers of the game. <laughs> From yeah. first gen inside, yeah. The first yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> we'll be following this guy. Legend. <laughs> real legend, real legend. <laughs> So obviously you two have got a bit of history together. Yeah. How did you meet Slim? I mean, I think the first time I probably ever met you was definitely through Johnny Cash. Like Johnny um, being a part of the Black Ops crew, one of the one of the DJs and producers mm. from that crew. So yeah, like through through Johnny. But I can't remember the I can't remember the actual first day I ever like I ever met you. Yeah. But do you know what? I'll be real and say that I, you know me growing up like raving. Like from pays you go to obviously the grind days, whatever. Mm. Like this gentleman here, like I've seen him play many a set. Like he was, mm. you know, the hero. I think the big, the big <coughs> it was guy. mostly side one. I may, I might have seen you. Or... Probably, probably a side one. I'd say definitely. Yeah, definitely. So how did you hear about Dread D? Through Johnny Cash. Through Johnny. Yeah. And what was the first tune that you noticed War. of Dread? Oh, um, yeah, it was um, Gate Bar one, isn't it? Invasion. Innovation, yeah. yeah. Invasion. Yeah. So how did that come about? Did Johnny give you the tune uh, or did Dread reach out you to you? Yeah, I had a good like like me and him used to talk a lot every day and stuff and uh, when he made his tune he, he said, I got this tune, like, like you've got to listen to it and then I played it like I mean I thought, boy, this is proper, like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then yeah, yeah. I played it at Sideway and I think it was one of the first Two thousand two was it? Two thousand two. I was saying this. I don't know if it was the first time you played it, but like the probably like the most standout moment when <coughs> you played one invasion was uh, New Year's Eve two thousand two into two thousand and three, mm. and you played it maybe like two tunes before like the countdown, oh, and it just went off. Yeah. It just went off. Like it was just yeah, it was mm. sick. <laughs> it was sick. Sanctuary. S- Sanctuary. Yeah. Sanctuary. Milton mm. Keynes days. Yeah. Do you remember playing it that night? Yeah, maybe? I can remember. Yeah. So what was the reaction when you played it? Yeah, it's just like. It's, it's good to mix and like, do you know what I mean? It's drops it in and <laughs> MCs, it's sweet, <laughs> mate. It's just, yeah. And it was like prototypes then, like dub plates. So yeah. That was, yeah. So did Johnny cut the tune for you? Let's give it to you. Or did you go he and cut it He used to yourself? cut some tunes for me because he cut me well as well. Yeah. You know, and then that's how I got to know him. But then, yeah, he was cutting me dubs and I was buying, getting my like dubs cut, JTS and a few other places. Yeah, so like that. Was dubs like important for you yeah. back then? Yeah, it was yeah, definitely, because there's no other way of really playing vinyl except for getting dubs or, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's all about dub play. Yeah, them days. It's cut about eight a week, nine. Eight a week? Yeah. yeah. And how, yeah. Much, how, much, <laughs> how much was your pounds? They was then £25, £30 sort of thing, but Freddie would, you know, just give him some Fosters and... He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's good geezer, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was good, though. But, um, yeah... So, Slim plays Invasion, Sidewinder. Was you there? No, nah, I was at home in my bed with my girl. Yeah. <laughs> I was out. Do you know what? Like, those days there, I wasn't really... I was... So, I was doing, like, uni and stuff and college or whatever mm. around those days. Actually, it was college, probably that time. And um, I used to go raving, but, like, those times there, I had, I had a girlfriend and I used to just be chilling out with her all the time, to be fair. So, mm. then man were just calling me, like, yo, like, Slimzy's played the rhythm. Like, da 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 Like, gas, 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 gas. And you know what? There was no internet them days, was there? Nah. Really? Like, it was before internet got out around the world. So, it was just, like, word of mouth and doing it live sets and... So, was you playing Invasion on the radio? Yeah, well, yeah. Before that, you dropped yeah. it to Sidewinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he <laughs> yeah, yeah he you know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was battering it. Yeah, no, nah, it was like, it was what, like, it was a main tune because, like, you know, Wiley and Dizzy used to spit on it. I got tapes, do you know what I mean? Like, Koya, yeah, Wiley used to love that tune. So, Dread, so in terms of Invasion, what DJs did you give it to? Like, myself personally. Mm. I was only really giving it to people. So how it actually got to, to Johnny, I gave it to Johnny, obviously, first and foremost. Like, I actually just dropped in the C, the, no, the mini disc to his yard. And then I was just like, I knew I had, I knew I had heat. I knew, I knew it was heat anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I'm mm. going to drop this to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully he hears it as he, yeah, yeah. as I do, right? Yeah. But Johnny's that type of person. He, he knows what time it is. And he was just like, yeah, bang, this is the one to you. Like, this is, this is going. Mm. So, um, and then my friend DJ Dice, as well, who's part of Black Ops. Okay. I used to always, so same thing, that like I used to always just feed him like dub plates 
all the time. Mm. So I'd be I'd be pressing up the 25 pound, but I'd be doing the 25 pound, maybe playing it once or twice on like mm. my radio show if I was doing like freeze or something like that, whatever. Mm. And then I would just give it to um, DJ Dice to play. And he was on Lush FM at mm. the time. So I'd give it to him to play. So we just share the dub plates around like all the time. So I wouldn't really, I wouldn't say I would like actually give it to anyone like that. I would just give them the dub plate that I had already cut. And then if mm. man played it, then cool. And he might give it back to me and I'll give it to someone else to mm. go and play on the next radio station and just keep doing that until, yeah, until someone heard it. So when Slim's playing it, like, on different stations, like, week in, week out, does yeah. that, like, get a demand for, does it bring a demand for other DJs trying to contact you for the tune? Not me, I wouldn't say me personally. Like, it's funny because, like, people used to hear me play it and they'd be, they'd be like, how the hell did you get that tune? Like, they didn't know you made it. Didn't know I made it. Like, <laughs> literally, yeah. man, we'd be looking at me like, oh, like... How like did you get this? Like and I'm like, nah, it's my tune, like kind of thing. <laughs> Same used to be for war, like all the all the black all the black ops tunes when mm. it was like popping like that mm. moment. Mm. People used to look at us like, right, like, how'd you get that slimsy tune? Like, kind of <laughs> like, it's like, so, you know like, what? I've played it twice a show. That's why I've tried it. You played it twice dead. a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Really? Like, laughs> yeah. Well, at, you know, once at the beginning, like need not like, at the, and then second hour, power hour. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, it's got to be played twice, really. Yeah. For like months, and then. Yeah, people just, they want it, you know what I mean? So back then, people basically say if Slim weren't playing it, it's not going to make the cut. I think that's true. 100%, like, that was, like, so many of, like, people that I know, like, so I know, like, obviously, um, Zander Hardy, DJ Virus, like, yep. Roosting, and, like, mm. even, like, Dele, all these people from, like, the ends, like, we knew, like, you've you got to give it to this guy, like, he's, mm. you know, and also it was a seal of approval, because, like, you, I, I knew if he played it, then it actually was a bang-bang tune, like, yeah. as well, at the same time, like, it's that, it's that seal of approval, but, yeah, if he weren't playing it, then it's just, it's not going, it's not happening. So what's the feeling for you, Dean, when, like, you know you've got people's careers in your hands, like, if you play the tune, it's, it's mad, gonna, like, it's, it's going to blow. It's mad, you know, like, because we set up radio every night and stuff like that, and then play the dubs on the radio, all the new tunes, and people, they want it, like, it could, people, you know what I mean, it just used to help the DJs and the producers, and people would listen, and it would just, do you know what I mean, it would go all round, like, people would take, do tape, CDs, and it would go up and down the country, like, mm. that's how it got about, because, do you know what I mean, it was mad them days, like, so many memories. How did you feel when... DJs would, sorry, producers would give you tunes. Mm. Then you're playing it, they give it to other Yeah, you didn't tell like the that, truth. It's, it, it's still <laughs> going on now. Like, yeah, I like to, you know, it don't mean that, but I just used to like exclusives and stuff like that because it makes, all the, you know I mean, it makes people want the tune, like, you know, it don't always work, but it does make them want sort of like... Definitely. If someone, if everyone's got it, mm. it you know, it's a bit, it's one of them ones, it might not get around, but if someone's got it, who's, Doing good with it, got to let it roll with them in it. So, so how long until Invasion did actually officially got released? So I feel like Slim probably had it. You probably easily had it for about maybe about twelve months. He might have even had it maybe more. Like he had it exclusively. Exclu like yeah, exclusively. There was a vocal like, mix of that as well, wasn't there? There was. was there? there was. Yeah, we, so did this, do, we did do. We did do one. Yeah. Black Ops vocal. <laughs> we did yeah, yeah, one, yeah, Johnny yeah, and yeah, Johnny, yeah, yeah. Johnny Chats. Mm. Um, oh, Chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember us, but yeah, that we. Yeah, he had it for at least a good 12 months that like, he would have mm. already had it. Like, Johnny definitely had that kind of like PR thing where he was like, even if people were trying to hit me up for it, I would always be like, nah, like, I can't give it out to mm. you, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I had a lot of people from the, like, a lot of any DJs from the ends would be hitting me up when they knew it was my tune at that, that point mm. and be like, oh, can I get it? Or be like, nah, it's not, it's not happening. Wait for the, mm. wait for the tune to hit the shelves, isn't it? Kind of thing. Um, so yeah, about, I'd say about 12 months. But were you getting like itchy fingers like, okay, Dean's battering it? And like, don't you just want to release it? Or did you trust the process? Like, like let, let him keep playing it. Let the demand build up. Yeah, so the, thing, the thing is, that was like my first ever release. So mm. I didn't have anything to kind of like, oh, I didn't I, have anything I, else yeah, to base it on. Like, it to, yeah, nothing yeah. to compare it to. I'm, I don't care when this, actually, do you know what? Just Slim playing the, two, the, the track and that happening, that whole thing happening, mm. that was enough for me. Even if the tune didn't come out, mm. I'm still gassed. I'm still, mm. I'm still nice. Like, mm. everyone knows I've got a bad boy rhythm. Da, 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 da. It was good. So... In terms of like the, the vinyl hitting the shelves and the, the finance of that kind of like it going further than Slimzy playing it and the rest of it, I didn't really care. I didn't care. I didn't care. I was at uni. I was in college, whatever. Like mm. I didn't, mm. I didn't give a damn. Like I was just like, yeah. Like how I'm old was you? Uh, back uh, back then, I was about seventeen. I was about mm. seventeen, eighteen. Like yeah. What did you like make you on what? I made that on 
uh, Cubase? Rebirth. No, I mean oh. Rebirth. Like, oh, Rebirth. Oh, yes. yeah. Which is the same thing youngster, youngster used for Pulse X. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I made it on Rebirth. It was, re- it was a mixture of Rebirth and Cubase and Acid. So mm. that bass, the bass sound itself mm. is like something that I, I created. Actually, it's crazy. So the bass sound's created from a sound that was in Fruity Loops that mm. I took out, put it in Soundforged, edited Shut it, up. done my mm. bit to it, <laughs> like made the magic. And <laughs> then... Um, the drums and everything is from Rebirth, which I put in, and then I just kind of like laid it all mm. in um, in Cubase. So it was like three, four programs all in, mm. kind of using there. Yeah. yeah, that's how it got major. Yeah, that's it. Four, tra- four, four tracks and done. Yeah. So when it got released, yeah, what record shops was it in, and what was the response? Um, obviously, Rhythm Division. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was like a, that was like yeah, that was like a. <laughs> you had to go. There. Had to go Rhythm yeah, Division. Yeah, that was a big that one. Was a big, yeah. yeah, shifting units, of course. Uh, Johnny would tell me about that. And then obviously Uptown Black Market, mm. and those two were like, I would say those three were like the the main, the, the main, main and the others yeah. are just like yeah, they're taking box, they're boxes, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. they yeah. will take that two hundred pre sell. Oh, exactly. So, do you know what I mean? Like big so, thing, big big movement. Them days. Right? Yeah. So what other tunes, Slim, that hmm. were like your favourite tunes that you, you take responsibility I, for sort I of like blowing the tune? T- everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> name, listen, but name a couple right. that really are close to your heart. Well, yeah, I told... Um, like, I also like Save Souls by Narrows. Of course. But me and Easy had that on plate. So, yeah. And then um, like War is another tune. Um, that was... That was good. There was, you know, especially I had a baby dub as well that was going around. Like, yeah. I was playing everywhere. Um, oh, there was a few tunes. <laughs> Pulse X? Yeah, I was playing that. I mm. remember, yeah. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of some other tunes. Um, Dizzy Rascal tunes, Ho and Go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. like, it's mad because, like, yeah, it seems so long ago, but it's. I was going to say, like, it's funny because. Literally, if you go back, if you go back to like some of Simsy sets on Sundays on Rinse, right? Mm. So now you'd play the play the set, and it would be like every tune's like, okay, well that's a classic, that's a classic, that's a classic, mm. and everyone knows it. Mm. But if you wanted to transport yourself back to that time, mm. like those those tunes were. This, this is me listening to it as a producer and a DJ. I'm just listening to it, and I'm like, the, all the tunes were just fresh, 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 fresh. So you don't know who it's from, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So you pretty much, to me, you pretty much broke like. A, a lot of the classics from that era, like mm. you broke, like literally all of them. It was just like, okay, well, what we would do, go record shopping and try and get every single song from that, from your set, from yeah, your you, Sunday set. You, literally. You used to get a lot of people with tapes going to shops saying, what the what's, what's this? Yeah, what's this? Like, yeah. yeah even 138, remember yeah. that tune? Like, that was on a drum and bass sort of thing by Zinc on True Players, I think. And then started playing that. And then that came out after a few years sort of thing. That was <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, it's mad to go back and if you listen to like Slimzy set, like yeah, it sounds it, fresh now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, it's, it, and even like so, like my like younger brothers and stuff like that, and my nephew. I'm trying, I try like educate them on it, but mm. it's a it's a wild one because for them the tunes just like it's just like this is a banger. Of course, it's a banger. Mm. Yeah, but <laughs> but we had to get fed it from mm. you know from Slimzy and 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 that was spe- that's there was something very special about that. Mm. And looking back on it, yeah, it still sounds fresh. And you know what? There was a few bootlegs of that. Your work, <laughs> not your that you done it. There was people just bootlegging it. There's people. A bo- there's a new bootlegger actually. Oh, uh, brother, I, I give up. I give up with the bootleg. Mate, there was tons. <laughs> tons. Do, do you get annoyed when people like bootleg your, um, your tunes? Do you know what? Um, there was one. There was two that I really got annoyed about. There was like mm. a kind of like some kind of like Christmas carol, Ooh. like Jingle Bell. Oh, I remember. I know the situa- DJ was playing that. And I was like, who's playing that? Yeah. I think Spooky was playing that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, that yeah. was too much. That was like, that was like. That was did it sound off ago? beat? Like sort of. Like, it was like, off beat. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it just didn't sound good. Yeah, I was like, you know what? <laughs> the, nah, that's 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 a that's a step. Was that recent, like sort of? Yeah, a couple like, years ago, couple, five, years ago five, years, yeah, five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Around about that. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's that's that was a step too far. Mm. And then there was another guy who I felt like he was just, I felt like he was really trying to build his whole career off of just like dub, play, like like literally just putting them was on that Bandcamp. Scottish. Uh, I don't even know where it was. I, think, I just messaged I him was, straight uh, away and was just like, like, I think it was pulling this stuff. Yeah. Mm. I was just like that. It's really bootlegs was, you know, it's quite bad to be. Is that something like was that frowned upon back? Like oh, guy. was that something like? See, there was a few of the hoe boot legs and stuff yeah. like they're that. Made, would, big, yeah, would you was, play them though? Do you know what? I played that odds one. Remember that Pulse yeah. White one? Yeah. That was yeah. a big, big. one. Yeah. yeah, and even he's Save Souls remix. What he done? That mm. was that was big as well. But 
you know, there was some people that were only young and they was getting into the music and they, that was the only way of getting in by doing some their, of their best tunes, trying to do on recycle and chopping it up. And oh, yeah. yeah, so that's the way they would do it. You know what I, mean? I always used to think though, like, could you imagine, I, this is how I looked at it. I was like, I, and this is how I told that producer because I was just like to him, Obviously, you've got like a skill set that that's good because your bootlegs are getting played, right? So somewhere mm. along the line, the, the grooves and the rhythm that you're you're presenting is good, like mm. clearly. So the yeah. ideas are there. Mm. But I was like, how about if this was like your own sound and your own thing? Mm. Like yeah. it'd be much more like satisfying to get that into the mm. space and mm. you can continue mm. to bring your own sound to the table mm. rather than if you bootleg my sound for well, you bootleg my track. Yeah. You can't make twelve of those. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you just that's it. It's mm. just a bootleg and done kind of thing. Mm. And you want to hope that someone picks up on the goodness of you, but the chances of that happening, yeah. How did he take slip. it when you uh, messaged him, whatever you said? Do you know what? He was actually cool in the end. It was actually really cool. It wasn't like, well, you can't be offended and he, and he just, mm. he did take it down and he understood. Was but it a free I, download I, or was it? Was it? A free, it was a free download. Oh, so he wasn't making money off it though? No, 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 no. But I, that's what I was like, the whole thing was just bootlegs and I, had to, I was like, you know what? That bootleg's actually rubbish. Like, I didn't mm. feel it. If it was good, it'd be different. Exactly. Like. <laughs> if it's good, it's different. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was rubbish. Yeah. And then I was like, look, if you can, um, let me just give them a bit of words of wisdom. Like, just be like, look, this is just, just inexperience. Your own ideas. Yeah, and... just just give it a bit, like, give it a go. Like, you're wait, not you can do some of that, but not yeah. all of that. Mm. Do you Even know what I mean? like you play, playing it as yourself as a DJ. Do you know what I mean? Or not I, really giving it out and stuff. Exactly. But when you're trying to sell it or put it it's on a bit sort of, of yeah, you, bank camp, it's, 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 it's a bit of a taking a mickey in it. Well, yeah. Have, yeah, people do free downloads now, don't they? So they don't really make money, but make money. still. It's promo. It's still it's still promo, and you're still yeah. kind of like you're still taking it. But it's, it feels space. good though that they was do it like, like to to do like certain tunes. I mean, it must be powerful at least like a, it's like a compliment in a way. That it, is a, so yeah, good. it is not, in no, a way. It's a compliment. It is a compliment. But I feel like I did feel like at that time. By the way, I'm not. I'm guilty of doing the same thing. By the way, I, yeah, because you've got a I've few R and B takes. Yeah, I've done it too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. Done yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely done it too. Like, Everyone's so done there's, it. There's no. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But what I was saying is that even with most of the bootlegs that I ever did were always with R and B tracks that I mm. knew that we wanted to play in the clubs, mm. like. Like Cry Me a River, Cry right? Me River one, yeah. Like that's definitely one that so many people hit me up about now. Like mm. it's still like people still love it mm. to this day. I, I was bringing something to the table for for Grime. I was like, well, we don't have much vocal stuff or um, melodic stuff in there, so I'm mm. going to take this sample and, mm. and chop it up and bring it to the, bring it to the Grime. Mm. Great. Like, but if you're just recycling the same Grime tunes over and over again, that's when I kind of was like, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe not. And he like he took it well. He did. Mm. He definitely took it well. He definitely took it well. So Slim, what made you, what do you think defined you as a DJ? Like you would only get tunes like no one was playing. What, what do you think it was about you that made you so special and so important? Uh, you can answer this as well, Dred. Yeah. yeah. I'll, tell you, I, I'll tell you what, if I could just say for me, like again, young, grown up, whatever, it, there's not, there weren't many DJs, I said this to you the other day, like, mm. there weren't many DJs around town that you could definitely every single week, week in and week out, or go to a rave and you know they're going to play new rhythms. Mm. Like, and new rhythms that are going to bang. I was playing, yeah, <laughs> playing new stuff like every week. Yeah, this, this guy was just playing, mm -hmm. it was rhythms. Mm -hmm. like, and I was like, so for me as a producer, young producer, DJ, it was just exciting. Up and down the country, like, yeah. getting mini disc tapes, like, Sentia records. Like. Why was she, what, where was the hunger coming from? Like, he was hungry. I was yeah, like, I where, just, where did know, that come from? It ain't from? about the money, I just loved it. Like, it's just like, a buzz you get, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. most people get it, but like, it's just, just got to do it, like, you just do it, innit? Like, you just want to, just want to be like number one, but you know, just even bigger question though. Sure. If you're getting mini discs and all that up and down the country, mm. even me now, like you know, when you're getting promos or whatever, you're getting mini discs yeah. up and down the country. How did you sift through them and pick the ones that like were going to be the hits, like the, the bangers? Yeah. Like, you that's know what I mean? That, that's, that, that must I've have been a job. You know, like, just, just yeah, it's, uh, some tunes I didn't really listen to, tell the truth. <laughs> but you know, I'll, you've got to give, give people a chance, so I like just that. go through them. I like that. You know what I mean, like, just go through them. So would you go through them literally? So more yeah, time, mate, you go through was, them all. It was tunes as untold. Like I was getting tunes sent to me, like you know, through big distributions. And they yeah. were doing all that. <laughs> oh they really? Just, like they were just put, like releasing anything, press anything, just to just make your money. Like, but yeah, most the, the best tunes were the underground people, like the younger people. Do you know mm. what I mean? And yeah, like there were some proper tunes going on them times. Trust me, it was, never get them days back. 
Nah. Do you feel like they were the original days? Like they now, were that, you know what? I, you know, I like it now, but them days with saying about it, yeah, like we, you know, not a lot of us knew what we was doing really. It was the start of something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like you know, yeah, it's mad. Like pirate radio was a big thing, and you know what I mean, raves, it all connected. How important was pirate radio? Yeah, definitely. It was like people, you know, would listen every, all every weekend because it used to come on weekends mm. at first, and they would sit there and. Just, you know, chill out, listen. I used to listen to Cool FM, like mm. when I was younger, and I used to listen in my nan's bedroom, like listening to Brock in debt. Yeah. And like. Sunday night. Yeah, it's something, <laughs> yeah, like it's something <laughs> what you want, like you think, oh, you know what? It's, it's, it's got to work at it. I mean, never stop, just be humble, and yeah, one day it can happen. Like, it can happen to anyone. I mean, it's got to put your, all your effort in. And What was the moment for you where you thought, like, this is happening for me now. Because obviously you've had a lot of ups and downs. Obviously you wanted to be like, you wanted to break into the garage scene and it yeah. didn't really happen, did it? I was, do you know what it was? I was just jungle, or hardcore, then jungle, like, you know, 93, 94, 95, and then couldn't really get in that scene. So I started playing a bit of like garage in 96, 7, and then it started getting a bit like instrumental bass. Like I was trying to get break beaty with the garage, trying to make it a bit like you know, just for the MCs and stuff. Not all about the MCs, but like, yeah, like that. And then it was definitely again, like, you know, it was get, yeah, I was planning for like with Page Go stuff and that before that, and even Paco and Plague and stuff. Mm. And it was getting more instrumental based and like, you know, it just, it just, it just caught on. Like, When's the moment, like, was it during Page Go or when you sort of Page Go broke up? When's the moment you thought, like, yeah, I'm, I'm number one now? Do you know what? I never won an award, though. Like, you never won, won an award? No, he didn't. No, no way. No. That's crazy. <laughs> you was the only DJ. Like, he's the guy. <laughs> Still, true, but he's like, at first, he said, you know, go give it to Don. him. He yeah. was Don, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was there, and then... I didn't want to take him out, and I think it's just... The more I wanted just to play dubs, and he was playing dubs, and I was playing dubs. It was a big thing, like, to get between us two. Like, yeah. mm. It was a big thing. Do you know what I mean? I always play more instrumentals, like bass. He would play instrumentals and some vocals, but yeah, it was them days there. What was that? So was it more when you was in Page Go or when you left? When uh, you thought? Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm saying like, so there was no, there, you don't think there was like one defining moment where you looked back and yeah, was like, it's got to yeah, be a like, moment where you thought like, yeah. different like, times, this right. is me, I'm, I'm, I'm flying right now. Do you yeah. know what it was? Like, it was like Page <laughs> Go, on. you know, Soul Solid and Heart Screw. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Heart Screw was doing their thing in North London. Mm. Like, everyone had their different, like, crew, like, the three major crews. Like, I think, yeah. And it was just like, I'll, I was just playing more, like, dub plates. Like, more of a DJ, DJ. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then, um, yeah. Just started playing, like, new tunes and new producers trying to bring like a different sort of sound. Like, you definitely did that. Like, that's why I started playing some well, some slow dad jungle. So like with Yeah, that yeah, was sick. That was that was the moment. Actual, um like half time. So slow it down on thirty three on the deck and yeah. then played it with like garage or, or dark garage like you know what I mean, them times. Mm. Yeah, trend setter. So Dread, um Yeah. Invasion comes out. Yeah. What's your next move? Obviously, you've got this big tune. You must be like... Make another one. <laughs> and so, what, so what come after? After, after Invasion dropped. And how did I, your life change, if it did change? I mean, it, 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 it didn't really change like that. Like, per, like, pers like I'm I not saying you've got loads of money, but in terms of maybe yeah. your confidence and like maybe people know who you are now. Yeah, do you know what? It's funny because, like I said, this guy's a humble guy. But I, back then days when I was younger, like, and that tune came out, Mate, my head was blown up. Like it was, I thought I was the guy. Like for, for that period, mm. and um, you know, just young, like brave of it. Like, and not in a not in a walking around like that. But like in my head, I was like, I can make another one, and another mm. one, mm. and another one, mm. and another one. And how simple that track was, how it simply mm. came to me. Um, I was like, yeah, once I get equipment, proper equipment, and all the rest of it, it's a wrap for everybody. Kind of yeah. thing. That's what I thought. So I would say. My next move after Invasion was just to think about like making an, another one and another mm. one. So I did, I did like Invasion, then Invasion VIP, then Invade. Like, yeah, I, was like, I was like going yeah, on. Yeah, like, it was, was tough. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm hitting this off now. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it as many times as mm. I can over and over again. It's like <laughs> when like people wanted that one and that one come out, I'd, the VIP would be, be done. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's so it. Be ready for the next, next sort of bunch. Like, 
rent, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I was like that. And then, like I said, alongside that, you're doing little R&B edits for, the, for my own sets. And then mm. Johnny would always like take them and be like, oh, like, mm. we can press that up, we'll do that, whatever. Mm. It was, yeah, it was just a fun, it was just, like they said, it was a fun time where the next moves were always just kind of like playing themselves out for you mm. without me even thinking about it per se. But like what it did do for me, you're absolutely right. What it did do for me is set a level of confidence mm. in that I knew that if I made a track, it potentially could get to Slim, mm. Slim will play it, mm. potentially it'll get to the world and the world probably will like it and I'll yeah. probably sell some units, you know what I mean, on that side and then it, and it go and go again. Mm. Um, yeah, it was great, like, yeah, that's, that, was, that was the next move, mm. make another. <laughs> keep making, keep, <laughs> keep making, making them, like, balance. yeah. Keep making, and, and the thing about that was, like, I feel like it was only like, so that Invasion came out 2003, mm. let's just say 2003 to 2005 was like the golden era for us in, at Black mm. Ops. Right? Oh, Black Ops, yeah. Yeah, 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 like 2003, 2005, I'd say, because by 2005, we had really started to like diversify and move on and, and Funky was already becoming a thing. Mm. And we was already listening to house music. And Did it go music. quick sort of thing? It like, went rapid. Yeah, you don't realise, it just goes like, like that. Two seconds. Like, it was the same with you, it was like between 2001, 2004, five, Slim? Yeah. I was DJing more well, before my that. No, but in terms of oh, Graham, like Graham early the early stuff, stuff. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. About two thousand, two thousand to two thousand five. Yeah, two thousand five. So do you? Um, I know Johnny feels this, but do you feel like Black Ops don't get the credit like you guys deserve? Like when people talk about Graham, they're quick to like even they don't even mention Black Ops. Yeah. So I always I've always felt like that the conversation. Obviously, of course, like you know, all held the pioneers that were in East and the MCs that were doing it and Slim and, you know, the, the gang. But always, I always think about, like, the producers that, or the producers that Slim was mm. playing that maybe don't get the shout out that mm. they deserve. Like, like obviously, Macabre like, Unit. Macabre so Unit is a massive yeah. one. Like, a, literally yeah, yeah. a massive one. I forgot about them. Legends. Yeah, uh, yeah. Macabre, Macabre, Macabre Unit. Macabre no, Unit. Legends. Them. But then, you know, you've got Mr. Fidget, Deneo, like, you've got mm. your Zana Hardys, you've got your, your Pele's, um, Alias. Alias, yeah. You know what I mean? All these characters that were really, like, defining the sound at the time. Miley stuff, isn't it? Yeah. To Eskimo and all the early stuff. So they, I've always felt like maybe not like necessarily that we don't. It would be nice to be in the conversation. Do you know what I mean? Even 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 if it was like mm. just the situation. But then I do understand there's a, there's a level of this which is mm. which was hard because obviously everyone was trying to like define mm. their sound at the time. So mm. obviously we were saying it was sublo, mm. right? So we're mm. doing we're doing nothing. And there was there was a line in the sand. Do you that think that draw. sort of didn't do you a favour then? So it's trying to call it sublo. People saying, well, this is not grand then. It's sublo. Sublo is your own thing. Like sublo is just Johnny Cash, Dread D, Charmsy. Yeah, in the long run to like maybe punters, that might be it. But if you take take it for instance, like mm. Slimzy was playing like sublo or Esky or whatever. Like yeah, it's just... he was grand. So mm. I'm saying if if he played it. Then it's grime, and I feel like that was that should have mm. been that should always be there should always be if you just want to define it and understand what grime was, then Slimzy's it. Yeah, Whatever Slimzy grime. played, boom. But why is it? I'm trying to get to the bottom of why don't you think Black Ops is more in the conversation? I do feel like that that's probably a big part of it mm. that we 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 were we were hell bent like literally on and and it's because we didn't like the name grime in the first place. Mm. We never liked it. We was always we, when it when it came around via the media, we was always kind of like. This is not really. This doesn't feel right for us. Like and so, I guess for a long all, time we just kept kept running. Calling it different names, so people were calling it like Esky, you know, Graham, um, step fast it, like, Yeah. What did you um, think of the name Graham? Do you know what? At first, I don't think it was called Graham. No, but when it it wasn't about two. No, that's what I mean. I think what, what, isn't it? What yeah. Was it? People was calling it Esky, no, two step. Like, that, though, there, there was no name. No for name for it. it. Yeah. 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 Was, we was. Yeah, it was just... It's just like journalists. It's, it's all <laughs> different, saying different things. Like I can remember saying it, but it's come around once and it was Graham, I swear. I just did you, what did you think of the name Graham? You didn't care? It's just because it was like dark and gritty. Like, you know what I mean? Someone's got, uh, yeah, I don't even know we basically who started it called Graham. Yeah. <laughs> it's got called Graham. It's got called Graham. <laughs> like, I know. I, I, like, in my head, I was like, this is crazy how mm. something... Because I'd be real and say this, like, I was just trying to make garage. Mm. That's all I was yeah, ever yeah. trying to do. I was just yeah. trying to make garage. Really, really, like, really in my head, I'm like, I'm just like trying to follow the footsteps of Wookie and mm. the legends, yeah. you know, Zinc or whoever. Like, I'm mm. just trying to follow the footsteps of that. And there was and loads even, of tunes. Even the Wonder Tune, what? What? That that was made and with the flutes. Do you think that, that changed things that or what? That sort of got, when that sort of was played, that even now I get like producers say, when that, they come to like Grime from DMB, from, they come from that to, Graham. Wonder what? When they heard that, yeah. When they heard them shift, yeah. Them dark, hot, like, oh, yeah. yeah. That made them shift. Yeah, that, you know, like, yeah. 
production wise, so I mean, how do you think that like, the production's changed from? Do you think it's like still the same? See, well, like it, now, um, like new producers, do you feel like mm. producers are still trying to make grime that sounds like it was made in two thousand and two or three? Different. Well, it, it's mixed like with a bit of bass. Like it's all. Di- everyone's got their own. No, but how would you define the sound now? Like, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie and say that I'm like super up on the sound now. We was having this conversation mm. about it, but what I was saying before is that all the palettes, like all the sound palettes, are already there. They're already mm. preset for people. Yeah. So if you want to make something that kind of has an esky feel, then you know where to go. Yeah. If you want to mm. say something that's kind of like sublo feel, then you know where to go. You want to make something that's like a youngster tune, you kind of mm. know where to go. And we have those different kind of things set. And I feel like this generation is just, is taking from the things that are already set and kind of like building on the, building on top. But of is that. that a good thing though? Because mm. you're always just gonna go. It's always gonna really essentially sound like a youngster tune or a Dread D tune or a Wiley tune. I mean, to to a degree, it's it's um, it kind of feels like it's it's still new and fresh and like they're moving mm. on from us. Like so, that's good. Mm. You know what I mean? But then, I we were saying like I'm like I want to see. I would love to see like a producer come through, like another Spyro, for instance, come mm. through in this generation. Mm. That's <clears throat> that's doing. That. I'm sure maybe someone might. Be telling mm. me, someone might comment on this and say there is one. Oh yeah, check this person. Like, you don't <laughs> yeah, know what you're like, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just like, it, that's kind of the people thing. People come, people go. For. You just gotta yeah. s- stay current. How like, are you finding it now, then, Dean? The sound of Grimes. Obviously, you're still I don't mind three it. different. No, radio I, I play like 140, like dubstep, Gram, trap, whatever. I just play anything like what I like. Yeah, it's all bass. Like, Do you feel like the levels music, are yeah. still there? Do you know Honestly, like, tell the truth. Do you think the levels are like there? Do you know what? Like, you, when you start producing, you realise, like, I mean, that you start understanding some things, that like, and so what do you understand now? You, well, you mix produce bands and stuff like that, and like you know what I mean? <clears throat> that was the difference. So that was the funny thing. Just to touch on yeah. this, sorry, like mm. when you're talking about mix downs, this is one of the things why we wanted to separate ourselves at, at, ourselves mm. at that time. Mm. Remember, Johnny had a full studio. Yeah, like his stuff. Had a was, Mackie, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. So he still would, got it. Yeah, mm. still got it. Yeah. So he was like. For me, he was like the person that was in my, always in my ear about mix downs, mm. um, just arrangement. Every, everything was meticulous, like with mm. him, and it was always done in the same way that I would do it today mm. with my current projects. Right. So mm. he was like very much industry and making sure the mix downs banged. Mm. Whereas there was a lot of times where, and I get it from mm. the time frame, a lot of producers at that time maybe didn't have the best studios, didn't yeah. have like the greatest mix downs. Because more younger. Younger, yeah, 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 it was younger. Everyone was just trying a thing. So yeah. that's one thing I could say about maybe this era that is maybe different to then to now. It's like yeah. clean. It's the mix downs are there. The, the things they've got the tools. There's more yeah. information out there. So even what stuff on YouTube, how to mix down, yeah. what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've got the tools. Um, but one thing that kind of like takes away, I guess, is like what I just said about kind of like making my own bass sound back in the day. There's the tutorial of this thing online. Someone's got a tutorial online trying to make the invasion bass sound. <laughs> Far from it. Is but there? There is. There is. There is. A, there's a guy who's on. YouTube Ableton, like he's just trying to make the bass sound. Got it completely wrong. But what did he say? Like, he he thought he thought it was like he thought it was from um, a piece of hardware, like like, but it actually wasn't. It's from it's a sound from Fruity Loops, mm. like, but it's yeah, obviously. Was like, it pretty close though? No, not even. Like, no, but it's no the sound, the, the sa- bass the sound, sound no, no, he's the sound, made. Yeah, the sound was kind of there. The sound was kind of there. It mm. definitely was kind of there, but you would know it's not the actual sound. Okay, yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's not. It's not that. Um, but that's the thing. I think. That kind of experimentation and trying to make your own bass sounds and trying to be unique in that respect. And all people have their influences, so yeah, they will go back. That's what you do with the E3 break stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like, hardcore samples yeah, and stuff. Yeah, even there? jungle. Like, you yeah. know, just take little bits and just mix it up and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm inspired by. So, yeah. Everyone's got something what they like. Yeah. What made you um, start producing? Especially so like, late in you your know career. What? I, I did buy a studio years ago, but I... You know, I was too young and well, you know, he was in my bedroom and I used to wake up and I thought, wait, I'd be so hot in here. <laughs> Mate, I had <laughs> the mixing desk. All the right equipment's on, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, it, was so, well, it was too, it was oh, so man, hot. Days, you know what, I thought, you know what, yeah, I can't have that. But yeah, no, I didn't But didn't really, you like, I just wanted to be a DJ, really. you had really. Wiley, G, yeah. Target, all this around the you. Trying, remember the old Triumph Trying, days? Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. Triumph really, what, that was a big thing. That was like, sound. Was you too focused on DJing? Like you yeah, thought, oh. I bought it, but you know, oh, I really should have. I'll give it, like, you know, I should have really kept it up, but that's one thing I didn't do really. But it's never too late. So you no, just, you're doing it now. Yeah. You've had some big releases. Mm. You're, do, you're doing well with the producing mm. um, the E3 break stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just about, like, I mean, learning the craft and everyone's, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a lot to learn, isn't it? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> if, you, if you want to go in detail, like, proper stuff, like, but. Um, 
what do you use now? Like so now I'm st- I'm on logic, logic, logic yeah, now, yeah, logic, yeah, yeah, logic now, and um, yeah, I guess yeah, you just never stop learning. It's always yeah. evolving. There's always new things coming out. Yeah. And, you know what I mean, do you, do you feel like obviously uh, back then, Dean? I feel like you didn't have to produce because obviously. A lot of the producers back yeah, then wasn't DJ. Was yeah, there was DJ DJs and there yeah. Was, yeah. But now it seems like you have to be sort of like a producer DJ now, or um, yeah, sort of. But I was talking to Dread about this. You feel like that's actually killed the art of DJing, where producers well, West- now a DJ and they don't really know how to DJ, but. They're getting mm. books. Obviously, the promoters want to hear their tune. Has that killed mm. the art of DJ? What do you feel? I, I you feel what? like, dude, I was going to say. It's a tough one, but you don't, yeah. No, um, no you've got to tell, tell the truth, both of you. It, God, I, I prefer mixing on 1210s, you know, like, well, back then, really. Like, because, like, it's, you can't just cheat on it, can you, really? You can't. <laughs> like, so, you, like, you can't. You can't you cheat have, at all. You know what I mean, it is a hard thing to, to learn, to tell the truth, but once if, if you get it, you know what I mean? It's got, yeah. But do you feel like now, because all the producers are DJing... I remember that, like when people started first coming around and that, and then, you know, like, they would start playing their tunes and, yeah. How, how did you feel as a DJ? Did you feel a bit edged out? Like, oh, what... Yeah, what the, like, not maybe you, because you're one of the top DJs, but, mm. like, maybe a, a new DJ <coughs> coming up now, they could say, what's the point of me DJing? Yeah, all these producers, what tunes am I gonna, actually going to get? Mm. What exclusives can I get now? I think the internet has done a lot of things as well. Like, good yeah, things or bad yeah, or both. Good things, definitely yeah. good things. <laughs> but that's what I'm going to say. Like, if you think about the what we would call about, like, so, like, Slimzy kind of being, like, a DJ that would mm. want exclusives and keep all that going, that mm. definitely has taken a dip. Like, there's less DJs that are trying to be mm. dub plate kings mm. and just be absolutely exclusive and... Mm. and I would say maybe being a producer helps you have some exclusive in your sets mm. because oh it does mm. you've, yeah yeah you've got your own production that's, that's what's good that's yeah that's a, that's, that's a that's a, good that's thing, a positive yeah. the other side of the coin is yeah there are probably some some amazing DJs mm. that aren't going to get heard mm. because they're not producers and yeah. that sucks do you know what I mean that's like frowned upon like say if you're going buying all your tunes off Bandcamp or iTunes or you're, you're playing tunes essentially people can hear uh, like, already the tunes don't even last on that moment no, no they don't they last five minutes don't they. And back then, 2002, three, there was the SL.net. Do you remember that? I don't like, remember that. He used no. to stream shows, like, of the best pirate shows every weekend. Mm. Damn, you're telling me. And, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, he was from West London somewhere. And then, like, yeah, he used to stream all the best shows. Like, All right, damn. That, 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 that's when internet started, like, getting a bit... You could only have 100 at a time. And, yeah. <laughs> all right. It would cut off after 100. So, obviously, Invasion, that was getting battered for two years. Right. Literally. Mm. Now, you, you couldn't really batter a tune for two years, could you, Dean? <laughs> No. No, you couldn't, could you? So how do you break tunes now? Like how, nah, how, nah, can, how can you break a tune now? Like the same thing you've done for Dread, Macabre Unit, so, Plastician. It's still going how on, can, but how it's can just, you do it now? There's more oh, DJs mate. now, and it's, it's like, you know, it's a bit harder, and then as one comes in, one goes out, so it's got to be current, you know what I mean? It's got to keep going on. Like if, I was going to say as well, if you think about the differences that we now have more tools to break tunes, which mm. is like, we have the internet, we have social mm. media, we have all these things to kind of like break tunes. So I've seen songs of yours, mm. like without Slim, like even sending it to me or nothing. Mm. I've just seen it on his feed, boom, this tune. And then I'm just like, yeah, this, this, and I can see it's popping. Mm. I can see people are like commenting, mm. liking it, whatever, mm. or, 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 and then mm. that influences the kind of like the next gen to kind of, yeah, mm. well, you'd go and get involved in it because mm. now this looks like it's popping. I'm going to be a part of it. Mm. So I think, we have like different mediums in 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 the same way. Like so, i.e., like for me, Rinse FM was like the the old man of a place to go. Mm. Now it might be your your label to make sure I follow his label to make sure that like I get the next yeah. see, the, see yeah. what the next thing yeah. is. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, kind of like social media marketing and and those things are like the new radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And and probably even the metrics, the numbers and stuff like mm. help out. If you've got a song that's got like good numbers then probably people are going to feed off of that and kind of yeah. again, do you know what I mean? Same goes, for, do you know what? Same goes for Bandcamp. I'd say this, like Bandcamp is kind of one of them ones where it is for the people, but also you can see how many people have bought the, the, mm. the track. So mm. as well, when you see a track, so it's got brrr, loads of people mm. popping underneath it, then of course you're going to be like, oh, let me check out, see what's going on with this person mm. as well. So, but that, again, that's... And the thing, like, back then, like, it weren't worldwide now, it's worldwide now. It's worldwide, it, like, yep. yeah. It would have been massive if, it, if you know, like, people... I mean, all MCs breaking up, like, I mean, getting massive, like, it helped keep people's careers as well, like, I mean, the other DJs playing tunes and, yeah, like, it's a good vibe, like. Yeah, it's definitely a good vibe. But in terms of, like, how things have moved on now, do you feel like music's more accessible to everyone? And is that a good thing? Yeah, 
more accessibility is always gonna is always gonna be a good thing. Like I can't. But like, do you think that's watered, maybe watered things down as well? Nah, you find your pockets. You have to find your pockets in in what you're doing. So, i.e., for instance, obviously, what Slim would have been doing. Well, I definitely what I was doing in 2003. I'm not mm -hmm. doing in 2023. You know, things have changed. Things have evolved. But that also, my influ what I've been influenced by has mm -hmm. changed and evolved via the internet, mm -hmm. via like mm -hmm. that accessibility to to mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like there's always like there's probably less like big one clumps of scenes like you know like how we had grind back in the day when it's like big clump of whatever everyone's moving in the same direction and more like smaller like little niche markets of people kind of mm. like doing cool things and moving along mm. in that way which obviously us old heads we like we like it in the big way where there's a massive movement all yeah, together yeah, but yeah. this is like you know little movements little scenes little things that are influencing each other and that and even like less based on like locality like so so for us it was like me and Johnny and that lot, West London, we're going to influence each other. Mm. Like, these lot in the East, we're going to influence each other. It's about, yeah, North, East, South, West, isn't it? it was like, yeah, London's like doing their thing. And then, I didn't mean, like, even back then, like, I didn't know no one from West London, really. Oh, like, you I didn't? I was young, so no one would really go. We were really going, go. yeah, it's not <laughs> we're going I'm saying, saying, saying both, that's it. I wouldn't yeah. really go out and it's doing pirate radio. And then... And the same goes for so, us from West. We was like, yeah. we were in our ends. Like, that's, this is where we were. Like, so I think the modern day has kind of like definitely made sure that mm. there's... There's more cross pollination, more influences from around the globe. Mm -hmm. You could, if you're in London and you you want to get into, I don't know, like I don't know, Bala from Brazil or whatever, you can do. You yeah, can you, be yeah, fully into big, it. Uh, like, Grimes in yeah, Brazil now, actually. Yeah, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, yeah, big Brazilian following. But um, so where where would you say Graham originated from? Is it East London? Because I I've, I've spoke I to Johnny say, I don't briefly. Want to say that. <laughs> and Johnny says, "Don't want to get into it." Uh, no, well, obviously well, you're. The, you was the first Graham DJ, so your okay. word counts. <laughs> So like, I think you know there was. Don't feel different... away because he's sitting next to you. No, I was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the thing about it is? I'm actually. Do you know what? I always think, obviously, because Johnny's like the the head man, and he's definitely more probably more bothered about. He's definitely bothered, yeah. By what it is, but I understand why only because of the the the, the time frame. I guess mm. the time frame and the work that he felt like he put in. Yeah, because you know he was making tunes from like even the ISFM days. Yeah, yeah on like 99. I remember that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the records and the records. What was that, that tune? Haywire. Haywire. Yeah, called? yeah. What was that label called? That was Black Ops, wasn't it? Or was it called? Did remember he, um, the first label? The first saying, label. Like, I'm then, to... In the garbage days, like he was playing. But the, what it was like, Haywire. I, to that tell the truth, like, he told me some stories about that man. Even like people, like they don't take you serious. Like one day when things happen, and you know, like when you get your time, you get, like I mean, like it was, it's just mad. Like he just took someone to show people. That's yeah. all. Like, and that's what I'm saying. I think, I think he's probably like, like that for him. That's 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 a that's a hang up because I can understand. Like he was working hard from yeah. from, from about ninety eight, ninety nine. You know, mm. know what I mean? He's bringing that kind of like raw streets. And I know yeah. he told you about that, that thing stuff. to underground stuff. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I get it, you know, and, but then I obviously... And it's funny then, because when you start seeing like, your own mates or, like, or someone, they want, want your tunes then, like, and then they weren't playing it before. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were... <laughs> it's nice. And deep. he was putting out a lot yeah. of music in the... Like, yeah. the people used to be... This guy was mad. Like, he was just putting tunes. Yeah, mate, I'm tunes, telling you, tunes, he had about... <laughs> Have a rack. The rack, the whole rack I, in the shop. I could like, get a really? tune. Yeah. Yeah. I could get a thousand pressed in two days and yeah because he, he was going you know he, I think at first he, I think I was going with JTS because he asked me where to go and, and then he started going West um, Harrow I mean I know you're talking uh, about Holly isn't it I mean yeah. Yeah. yeah what's the name of the spot I can't, I yeah can't Liquid Liquid Master yeah, yeah, yeah Liquid Master but, you yeah. Know, Crooklewood yeah, yeah. Like, JTS was you know there was Musicast JTS where did you go JTS Mace, I used to go like there. Jungle like Music house in Holloway Road, like mm. Eden Grove back in '93 <laughs> and mm. them times. That was my, that was me. I used to go sit there, like, remember that? We used to sit there for hours, hours. There <laughs> and just like, just, just go and see people. people yeah, yeah. Go, there's more networking then, weren't there? Definitely. Like, they used to go and meet the people, get the dub plates, records, bit of talking, go get some food, go back radio, there's like, listen to radio, like, more listening to other stations. Oh, it like, sounds good. Look at that. Like, it was more like, Oh, nah, it's just too much. Like, Why is it too much now? Is it is just... This, it, you're not, I can't explain it. It's not... Uh, uh, what do you think? <laughs> it's just too it's much gone. for choice, but you've got to... Well, I don't know. You, you know me, like, I just... I kind of always look at the both sides of it. It's like, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you've got to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's good and the bad. Like, we had... We definitely had a special time with that Music House community. Yeah. That, was a, that was a special, special time to go definitely. down there. Like, for me, you know, I'm... 16 years old, 15. Did you go to the first music? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, before it, they oh, took right, away right. for Arsenal, yeah. Mm. And um, 
But I was a kid, kid. Yeah, when I went yeah, now, yeah. I was talking bunking school to go do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and that for me was like, you know, getting to see the heroes walk through, like the jungle guys come, come through, cut mm. dub plates and just sit into like hearing tunes. And yeah. I, that all was like part of the inspiration for like the stuff that I did when mm. I ended up making Invasion and the, mm. the, the Black Ops stuff. Like, so I think there's something special about that community for sure, 100%. Mm. Like, but again, like I said, we're... we're you meet people and everything. Think, yeah, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. But I feel like that's still... I guess the change in it is sometimes that's just communities have moved to Do you online. think it needs some of that again or something to die? I know it could never be records would be the same, but... No, but that place where everyone can go and yeah, chat that's... and like yeah, it's exchange, like a... listen to tunes together, mm. like that, that hub. That yeah, hub. it's like a midpoint, isn't it? Like it it's, it's like... Do you know base. what's funny? Do you know what's funny? I say this because it always happens. I'll tell you one place where it happened now, yeah. The station that you used to be on, right? Yeah, if yeah. If you look yeah. at all the DJs that have come from it, all the presenters, all the people that have come from that station that are in music now mm. and movers and shakers, you think about it, that was a hub at one point in time. That was, was the hub, yeah, it was, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that that those and I think those communities and those things are, are still they're still happening, just not in the kind of like mm. wider spread flow. Maybe not in RC, maybe not in a grand. Not in grand. Well, I don't nah. know about grand. I don't know. Well, there's don't know not, is there, Slim? There's not you one place where me, everyone. Yeah. I used to see you every single week, because like, that was because of radio. I mean, yeah. it was going out every. Yeah, but radio is like training, isn't it? Like, yeah, radio. It's works. just like you want to play the dubs, you want to show people that like, skills mixing and MCs on it. It's just. It's just but it's radio training. like training now, because I feel like radio to everyone is like promotion. Uh, promotion, yeah, well. like you've got a. Back back in your guys' days, was radio literally testing out. That's tunes, all there was. There was having no, a mess around. That's just, what I mean. But because the it was hard. 12 tens, it was hard to, it, you had to practice. Literally, you had to put in the hours on the 12 yeah. tens. You couldn't just, yeah. you had to put the it's, hours in. Mm. So that was just another way to put the hours in and test tunes and, you know, whatever else that you're going to do. It was, uh, yeah, uh, not anyone could just DJ, could they? Nah, nah. There's certain friends that wanted to DJ, but yeah, them 12 tens was, was working people. For, and like, when I was a yeah. kid, they were so <laughs> dear, like decks, like, there was like... I remember £340, I think, for, one, like deck. Yeah, for, one, for deck. one deck. For one deck. And I was yeah. trying to think, oh, I'm not going to get that money. Like, and I'm thinking, I just bought some Memorex decks. I did with no pitch. Yeah, oh, no like, pitch? Like, yeah, I'd won. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I had a Memorex deck on the hi-fi and then, I'd, you know, separate. <laughs> yeah. that off. Yeah. And then I had one deck with a pitch. Like, I had a similar yeah. setup. I had a, I had a yeah, JVC yeah, yeah. turntable, like just a hi-fi turntable and a SoundLab D- DLP1. Like, yeah, you do anything. You get, you get, you get, you get, you get back, like yeah. you scare. I mean, you just, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't change those days, would you? No, nah, they were. I can remember everything. No, I mean, I remember the first day, like, like met Wiley. I ain't, no, I mean, I know. Just, well, when was um? Tell us about that then. No, I'm just saying, like, that was. Oh, not in eighty two. Wow, Jesus. Yeah, you met Wiley in ninety two. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Wild. He, like, I remember he, like, he moved to like Bow and. Yeah, like it was mad because I I went on some outing with the school and he was on the same sort of like community club. So he, I met him there and I just thought, well, I've seen him before. And then he lived like just around the corner from me. Like Crazy. that's why he started talking, going going to his ass. His dad had a studio, eight track studio, sixteen oh. track back in the day. Yeah, and yeah, just started talking and that, and then doing radio and yeah, like yeah, it's mad. So you was doing, so who was you doing radio? So it was more him, Wiley, Dizzy? Well, this, no, this was, God, the uh, first pirate radio station I went on was 92 or 3. Mm. Yeah, um, that was like, yeah, that was old, old school. And then I was on Pressure, 94. Yeah. Do you remember Pressure? That, yeah, I remember Pressure. Yeah, Damn. that was like an East London station. Yeah. And then I, I think I got to 16, I thought, you know what? I want to start getting roofs. <laughs> like I mean, cause I was on there, and I fuck, see, see all the all the equipment, and it gave me a buzz. Like you was like up for that. When you you know, cause I know what it's like for kids now, because when they actually get into music, it's something it's exciting. And when you actually see all the equipment, all the bound one aerials, microwave links, and that, it's a buzz because you're on the chase from the police, and you're playing music what you ain't supposed to be doing. Yeah. And yeah. the phone lines used to pop then, didn't they? Popper. Uh, was they popping? Pop- yeah. Popper. It was, yeah, it was next level. You won't get that back. You knew nah. people were locked in. And yeah, because like pirate will go further back in the day, like you know, because it was like, well, not further, but like I mean, like little stations with aerials now, like community radio stations, don't go too far. It's a proper rig, but this is pirate will just go far. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a good dial, yeah, yeah, and then um, yeah, but yeah, it's mad. Oh, so many stories. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Memory lane, boy. 
Crazy. So like radio, and I said, you're saying like radio is more for promotion. Like now, I feel like that's 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 where it's at, right? If you're if you're if you're that DJ who wants to just be a DJ, and you didn't want to be a producer. Mm. Like where you're gonna like do like earn your chops is gonna be like going on radio week in and week out, presenting new music or presenting in general. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And and keeping that that going mm. regularly. You know, now that's a good way to get in the game. To be honest, if you if you're not a producer as well, mm. to be fair. So, so did you? Was your intention to be like? Was you a producer f- before a DJ? What, lived, how, how did it happen <laughs> yeah. with you? I know. So, that, so I, yeah, that question is like, I started them both pretty much at the same time mm. because um, I used to produce them, like, just muck around on the family computer, like, whatever I got. PC? A copy of PlayStation? PC, PC. Like, yeah. I got, got a copy of um, Cubase from my friend Courtney yeah. at school. Oh, cool, and he was yeah. like, yeah, just, I just put it in floppy disk, whatever, mm. I did it. Mm. Used to muck around on that. And then... Did you have a sample of them times? No, and I didn't have no sample. I'm talking, yeah. I'm using the GM sounds from the PC. Like, so it was deadest sounds oh, in the world. So like, the worst yeah, sounds yeah, in the world yeah. you could ever, ever think of. Um, but still just having fun and learning how mm. to arrange music mm. and how, you know, how it's structured, 16 bars, 18 bars, mm. like, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then... Um, then the DJing thing, again, was the same time. Mm. So if I think about it for that, like, you know, you probably did this. I, I talk about this all the time where mm. you used to just, like, try and, like, mix two tapes together. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, everyone, I think every DJ do that. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that kind of stuff. And so in terms of in my head, I just wanted to... Be, but I used to try... I tried to MC, I tried to sing, <laughs> I tried to do everything, <laughs> mate. I was just like, I'm like, I'm going to do... At first, you think you're good, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, trying to do it all, like... I was, I was mixing and like, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Was doing. I bought the wrong mixer. I bought, yes. I don't even know what I was doing. So for me, that, that <laughs> whole thing, the whole thing of like being a DJ or being um, uh, being a DJ or being a producer, which one did I get first or which one am I more like? Mm. I just love music. Like, mm. And I, I was just do, I did, and, I, and it just so happens to be that these two things are the things that I'm probably the most known for, like mm. I'm most talented at, like in mm. my repertoire. But I played drum kit as well. Like I played drums like at school, like I used to be in a band and all yeah, the rest of it. Yeah, so yeah. it's like That's good. I just yeah yeah, yeah. I, just, I was just in I was just like I wanted to be involved in music like you know and I've learned multiple instruments so mm. keys, mm. trumpet, violin, whatever yeah yeah, yeah yeah. So yeah, I'm just I just like and all I've ever done I've said this to you, all I've ever done is music. I went college did music, mm. degree did music, everything's just been music. So. Yeah, just the hunger. So those two things didn't, they just, they just kind of like started at the same time because I was just hungry to be a part of And I remember music. like the phones come out in 1996, like mobiles, you know, were made like the first like Mercury. There was something yeah, Mercury. Like the yeah. That, when they come around, like, it was mad. Like, do you remember them times yeah. when mobiles first come, come around? around? Yeah, yeah. What did yeah, that do yeah. for music? Like the phone lines you and everything? You could phone radio. up like and just... Do you know what I mean? Like shirts and talk to girls and it was mad. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> them days, I remember it? them days. <laughs> like, it was yeah. just, like, a bit of fun and it was so good to get up the radio oh. and actually see DJs and meet people. I think that, that even that like kind of like mobile phones definitely, um, you know, because before that, that you area. had to take a man's nan- landline. You're not really going to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, 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 it was no social media, like it was nothing. So you had to go round these ass like, and you know, every Sunday and do a set. Like yeah. you just had to look on the door. Buzz up, like. So take me back to like a typical day of like DJ Slimzy in like 2000. What would you do? Wake up? Mm. What would you do? Wake up? Um, go and meet this yeah, guy. Like, cut that. Like, you what know, would you, what radio would you, what? was my life, like really. Like, so what was you doing? Dubs. Rigging up, like what was you Rigging doing? Rigging up was the main thing. I loved that. Too, was that your main oh, yeah. job? What did you like about that? Look, yeah. Come on, man, like, I don't know why I say this because there was a lot of people that didn't want to go on the roof. Be like, scared. <laughs> when you're younger, you got no fear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like. Once you get up there and you like, you how big are these blocks you going up? The what? Twenty six stories. That was the main. That was the biggest one, most probably like one of the biggest ones in Wapping. So, and then when you're yeah. up there, what are you doing? <laughs> you got, you know, at first, like, I can remember going on the roof. I didn't even know what I was doing. Yeah. You got to learn, like as in, like, like when you're making tunes or. But how do you get on the roof in the first place? That's what I'm saying. You have to get in with the people. <laughs> you have to get in with. <laughs> well, the, uh, give us. Well, a you have to get in with. Like, you could buy FB keys from like shops, like you know, there was one down Roman Road called Thompson's. I used to go in there and buy FB keys for like two pound fifty. Yeah. But then it was different. You could buy a keys then, but now nah, then they started going to Gerda after years, like all these special keys. It started getting technical. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some people would nick your rigs and then I used to clean the roof up and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I mean, keep, keep it clean. Cause, like, it, uh, it's why, would ways. Keep, why would you want to keep it clean? Because like, you can be up there for years. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if you start cutting electric, like mashing it up, like you're gonna get 
bad yeah. name for the council, and yeah. they want they, they're going to come come and raid you one day, and then that's and they why did, they did for you, didn't that's they? That's what I mean. They started putting cameras up because, do you know what I mean? Like they want to make an example. That yeah, that was later. They want to make an example of you. So, do you know what I mean? They want they wanted you off. So when you got caught, did you think, oh, it's over for me? Like you love that's you your know, main you... thing, your buzz. You can't rig up no more. It was mad because that was in what was it, two thousand four, five, two thousand and four or five? I think you Six, got. Six, I can't remember. 2005. It was two thousand five. I was still rigging up after that, like do you know what I mean? But when that happened, Legend. that was mad. It's like, yeah. You think it was over for you? It's mad. I'm still. Oh, it's When's the last time you went up twenty six floors? Two three years ago. Yeah. All right, all right, fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, no, well, you not, really do no. love it. Then, like, yeah. <laughs> to tell you, I've been up one couple of months ago. Yeah, but Did nah, you? you can't even get up on like. Blocks now, do you know what I mean? It's so on top. What, so, you, so, so what happens you two, get caught on, ago, the, on the roof now? It's done. I'm telling you, like, just imagine you could like put transmitters down people's houses and something caught on fire. Like, you never know. Like, the old, like, it's dangerous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you didn't realize what, what was going on back then. Like, all the stuff, all the aerial. She had no fear. Do you know what I mean? Like, they had big thieves trying to nick your rig, and it's, it's, it's quite a long process. You have to learn it and. It's like making tunes, isn't it? So, you know what I mean? It's just mm. Yeah, so, so, so I guess in one way or another, like, without you being a producer back then, you having the technical ability or the knowledge mm. of going up on the roofs, knowing what the transmitters were and all that, that's like a different level of technical knowledge. Like, yeah. You've got there, like, At yeah. first, like, you didn't have a clue. You, you know, I would just leave it. Just leave it. Like, just tuck <laughs> it under mad. the thing. Two days later, it's gone. Gone, yeah. Yeah, like, course, yeah. Like, oh. So you have like, to kind of start getting smart take, about it. You know, you have to, yeah, you have to start learning and... Doing hanging over blocks, like you know, that's yeah, it's mad. Yeah, that comes after, but where would would you look like make the rigs yourself, or would you get it from someone else? No, like you know, it's, it's just like it's, you have to find the people, people really. Yeah. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? You have to go through of getting bumped from people, like giving people money, and they're giving you some little shoebox rig. Like, you think, what's that? And then don't work, and do you know what I mean? That's you know, it's like Hustle. when you meet someone good mm. and you stay with them. That's that's one thing that. Like, but with producers and DJs, once you know, getting, I was getting dubs from you. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? This is proper. Like, so yeah, just keep it all good all the way through. Like, clean, no traffic. Know what I mean, it's proper. Don't know, know what I mean, to play all the tunes. Like, so it's going. So, in terms of DJ, where did your career take you? Oh, uh, yes. In terms of just DJ? Just DJing. Yeah. As in, just like after, after so. Yeah, just your whole, yeah, obviously. Whole thing, from that, right, yeah. yeah. So, from, from the Black Ops days, obviously. After that, we started like getting into house music um, mm. and yeah, just, just doing all that. So then I started a new project, the T. Williams, Williams stuff, project, yeah. Mm. T. Williams stuff. And um, of course, just, I mean, just got into it, done loads, put out loads of music underneath Don't that name. did that, it was you, did they? Like, a lot nah, of people didn't no, know. No, I didn't know it was quite late. <laughs> it, was a, yeah. it was one of those ones. That was a big thing though, like, <laughs> trust me, like, check the sound cloud out. Yeah, yeah, man. man. He's done his thing. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, yeah, but I've just I've just toured all around the world, like do you know what I mean. Since I'm the same, but like I've just yeah. toured all around the world, like quite like you know, quite heavily, you know what I mean. So Australia, weren't you? Yeah, remember I talked to you once yeah. on the play or <laughs> yeah, I remember. Australia, Asia, America. I've never been to like South America, probably or like um, South Saharan mm. Af- Africa like that. But mm. like yeah, tour, just toured every Europe, whatever. Do you know what I mean? And um, that the, the and like I said, the thing, the funny part about it is that that all stems from that. Like, it's the grime, like and that that first tune that stems Invasion. from Invasion. Do you know what I mean? It all stems from there. So yeah, DJing has taken me like su- yeah, yeah, super far. Like played the heroes and mm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What about you, Slim? Where's DJing taken you? Yeah, same thing. So yeah, that's you know like I've kept to like one forty. So you one forty, isn't it? Or one three? I'm, oh, no, I'm down at one twenty-five. One twenty-five. One twenty-five. Right. 125, yeah. right so right. yeah, um, it, it's just that it's got it's, yeah, it's got. A bit. Where have you? Um, you played all over the world, but where's uh, sort of the hot spots so where you love to Tell play? Tell the truth, I just like seeing people happy, like, and especially when you're playing people's tunes, and you know what, you're playing it, and it's mashing the rave up, and you think, well, you know what, right, this is proper. Talk us, I mean? what, I don't like, smoke, recently, don't or like, last five, ten What's years, that, what, like, nights have you been to, you thought, this is proper, where you've played? You know what, Sidewind, it was a really, that was back then, that was a major thing, that opened up a lot of things for people. Sidewinder. So rinse sidewinder was a major thing back then. But what right. about like recently, last five, ten years? That's like, been quite good for mm. years. That's that's been like a little mid. Solid. Point. Yeah. Solid. That's that's been. That's it, what I was gonna say. Like probably like the first the first show I did back from the pandemic, I went to San Diego to play a festival called Crossed mm-hmm. um, in San Diego, 
and that Close, was yeah. cross, oh, cross, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. and ultimately like it was one of the same thing like just getting back out and seeing people smiling, mm. dancing, vibing, whatever. Mm. Like it just made me like, yeah, this, this is this is this is the feeling. This is what mm. we this is what yeah. we're there for. It's a lifetime thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a lifer. Like we're lifers, so you know what I mean, like it's a it's like a lifetime. So you, yeah, yeah, it's like business, isn't it? So. Yeah. So what what's the future holding for both of you guys? Well, the near future, I've got a couple of releases coming out and defected. Um, um, some Big labels, label. the remedy, the remedy project. Mm. Shouts to Melvo and that lot um, over there, uh, defected. And then um, I've also got like a kind of actually I've got to send you this. I got like a kind of I got an album dropping um, like probably like July or yeah. times, and it's going to be a label called Purpose City, and um, yeah, just like a nine tracker. And that is that is actually got like 140 on there. Like there's some jungle on there. There's like mm. Brexy stuff, and mm. then there's like some slower tempo, slower down tempo stuff as well. So it's like across the it's like an across the breaks board. Breaks is a big thing now. Yeah, yeah like, very big thing. Massive. Like, yeah, across like, the board. Love breaks. Yeah, I love them old hip hop breaks from the 80s and yeah, okay. them drums and that. So what's happening for you uh, next, Slim? I'm just doing like label, a concert on the C3 breaks thing with the breaks and like trap, like you know that grime, whatever. Just 140, like just trying to. Just, stay like relevant like where do you not think the underground music in general is going that's a mad one man but obviously we obviously have quite a, a strong resurgence in the UK right now of, like UK Garage and yeah. Step Garage we have like, like you know like Bakey and people like that like doing mm. some cool independent Clary Criminal and all these kind of cats doing some cool stuff Conductor whatever yeah. like as well mm. um, obviously there's there's obviously an ever abundance of tech house if you really want to be into that if you really yeah. want to be. and of course like even like I feel like 140 is definitely take, making a comeback with mm. like Hamdi and obviously yeah, these yeah, guys yeah. doing these, their, their thing as well so and that's the thing I keep my I try to keep my ear to the ground mm. as well. everyone to, does yeah, like, yeah, you know, keep, you've got to keep your ear to the ground yeah. you know what I mean yeah. when you hear it's like oh you know what that's all right. yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah. bad that's actually not I'm bad I'm saying that but yeah, yeah and then you start yeah yeah it's good Dabbing. I mean. but yeah Ham, for me Hamdi is the probably like the newest one that I've Probably just heard mm. of in recent mm. times. Like, I'm like, yo, yeah, you got the, you got the magic. That's mm. yeah, mad, like. Um, I what I was gonna say. Any now. producers that we need to look out for? Yeah, there's like, you know what? <laughs> well, that like him. I was just Hamzy, gonna say yeah. Andy, yeah. Yeah. Say, uh, oh. Do you know what? There's. Do you know what? Like, just trying to make some. There must tunes. be a few producers like in your camp that. As if you a got, kid. Yeah. Um, you know, like trends, uh, boiling. Mm. You know what? This is, it's, yeah, it's just got to like, oh, it's hard to really, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's got their little favourite things what they like, but just got to keep it up and play what you play, like, what you like. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's doing well, like, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah it is, it's coming back. back. Bass music. Like, it's never went away. Cool festivals. But, yeah. like, I mean, some people make tunes for radio and then they think it's going to do a rave. When you play in a rave, you can't even hear nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's no bass or nothing. Like, but it sounds good on the radio because it's all compressed and stuff. Mm. So it's all about the rave, like the raves, really, and the bass. It's like, like festivals and that. Yeah, I've got, yeah, festivals. We've got festivals coming up as well. Yeah, there's. Yeah, you've got a few yeah, things yeah. that you're doing across summer as well. But there's, yeah, I just feel like there's, there's, there is, there is a good amount of like music that I've heard in recent times that I've been, mm. I've played on like Rinse or whatever. And I was going to mm. say, even like, do you know what? I have to shout out like uh, Chloe Robinson and ADHD. Like those guys like are doing, they're pretty weird. Mm. The record label did do some cool stuff as well, which I'm mm. really into, which is, it feels like a nice cross between like mm. the gri actual grime and whatever. And like maybe like a little bit of techno. And oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all crossed like, down. Yeah. It's all like grime and dubstep. Yeah. It's, it's just cross. Like, it's crossed, Everything's yeah. coming together more, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a bit of, it's like a mix. Back mm. in the day, yeah, it was, you just imagine playing like a Bengal tune, with, like, not night, but that's like a grimy tune, but <coughs> like, a, like a tribally tune and like a grimy tune. You couldn't do it really, I don't think. Why, well, I was what? doing bits, but... You, why couldn't you though? Like, you weren't mix. MCs, when, like, you would play a tune and it, you know... It, it didn't you know, connect just, like yeah, that. They would yeah. just put the mic down. But that being said, <laughs> um, I'm sure you must have done a few of the dubstep raves, that mm. early dubstep raves. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, was there, yeah. obviously forward as a dubstep rave, like, and then... Um, Subloaded in Bristol. You must mm. have played Subloaded in Bristol like a couple of times as definitely. well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so we would do like, definitely, like, I feel like with, even like, um, you would have gone to this um, for, uh, club as well, or, um, Oi at Paradiso in yeah. Amsterdam. Oh, that was a big boy rave back in the day. Like. Shout out to Gomez. I, I went there <laughs> and didn't get paid. I just drove there. Yeah. Because I heard about this club and you know what? 
Yeah. Did you ever drove there before? Never drove there, nah. Mate, I remember I said to him, look, <laughs> just get me in the arena. And then, yeah, that's when I sort of come back. And then Spooky was there. Yeah. And that's when I'd see Spooky. Like, I didn't really know him. And then, yeah, he was... What tune was it I was playing? I was playing a trend tune, wasn't it? Oh, I can't, right. That hypnotise, I think, or... Oh, treads, hypnotise. tune, I can't remember, like... But, yeah, like, Paradiso was a big thing. Big like, thing. Me, big I'll thing. tell you. Like... But that's, that's, the, that's one of the places where I'd say, you know... I loved it, we, yeah. yeah we, there was a lot. But th- those were the kind of raves that were, like, the dubstep. Yeah. Cashmore was battering it, battering, though, weren't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we would get booked there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. So when yeah. you took a break and come back... Yeah, 2014. I met you, innit? <laughs> that's, that's when I met weird, you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's when I met you. But how... No, it was 2012. No. It was, I met you. It was 2012. Yeah, I must have... Yeah, but it's I think two, I first come back on NTS. 2014. Yeah, and then... Yeah, then... When I went back on Rinse about two years after. And then, yeah, just, Do you know what I mean? How did it feel coming back? I don't know, it's weird. Like, you know, I... I, I yeah, I had a few problems. I don't know if it's mental health, but it's just like you didn't want you. Like, I, I couldn't DJ like I sort myself out, sort of thing. And you know, like once you get like the buzz back, I tried DJ. I, I, I it wasn't the same. And then you know what? I just kept doing it, kept doing it, and forced myself to do it. All right. Do you know what I mean, it was hard, but yeah, even still now, you just got to keep doing it. Right. So you come back 2012. Like what? What was you thinking? Is this thing the same? Or d- uh, well, but 2012, so it's like Predator was um, Predator was about them back time. in the beats. Dula, yeah, 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 yeah. And awesome. like, yeah. Um, well, who else was about? Like, there was some. Faze Miyake. Faze Miyake, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. so, you know I mean? Them sort of tunes. So, yeah, like. So, what was you doing? Just going different. back on radio? Like, what it was. was a bit like, it got a, the speed that. Like, it wasn't 140 back in then. Uh, no. Nah, it was like 137, 138. Yeah, but it's like 130. Like, so, imagine, I see Slim. When, when he come back at that, mm. it, me and him would play the same raves at that point in time. But I'm doing like just bass music, what yeah, we yeah. call bass music, mm. and then you you'd be like to come and play a bit of grime or whatever mm. and mix it up, whatever. Yeah, so there's okay. just lots of like good stuff like around 130 BPM between 130, 135, mm. and then up to 140, whatever. Yeah. We was playing, we was playing 130 really and truly. Mm. At that point, I made a lot of tunes like at 130 well, at that point like in time. What I'm back then, like I mean, like. It was 140, was it then? It was between about 135 and 138. I remember yeah. why he made Nicole's groove, and I swear it was on 135. Yeah, is that, is that, yeah. Is that grand and though? No, 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 but Just saying. They were the no, but even those sort of that. tunes, there was like 135, 136, 137. It like, was 136. It was maybe. slow. It was, it was yeah, slower. It was a lot slower. It was a lot slower, BPM wise. A bit yeah. later in, like, in the scene, it, it got a bit faster, didn't it? But 140 yeah. is really good. It is good to rave to, like, definitely. Did you find it hard to transition from that like, and yeah, the music being faster? Well, like going from Dex to CDJ, so I've never. Oh, used how a was CDJ. you? On, how was you on that as well? You was quite shaky yeah, at first, wasn't you? Yeah, you have to. Uh, it's hard, like you know, like. <laughs> That's a big transition. Yeah, yeah, it was, but yeah, I can remember going on NTS on that first show with Logan, Rico, yeah, Flo yeah, yeah, yeah. and and yeah, me, yeah. Was was that, there, the, that was yeah. the first show back. That's the first show back. Like, That's, I've never amazing. been on really. CDs. Oh yeah, it was the first I'm show. Using yeah. CDs. Yeah, like, he was using. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a big bag like that, and I was thinking. <laughs> I didn't really know about downloading tunes, really, like emails. Yeah. Like so I guess that's a big thing. That's a big thing to get yeah, over in like the first place I as did, well. That's yeah. what I'm, all them years off, like I didn't really understand you could get an email sent you. And, do you know what I mean? Once you know how to do it, like, mm. you can understand it. Like, because back then you couldn't even get to. <laughs> it's bad if you can get chewed out five foot, like under tunes, like a week sent you. Like, it's bad. It's just like mm. that. It's all different. It's all done easy for you now. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, man. So, you've got any advice for up and coming DJs and producers trying to get in the scene? I just say originality is always key, and, it, and, that, yeah. and that will always that will always be the thing that will like mm. make you stand out from the rest. Do you know what I mean? So, if everyone's doing one thing, you know, you go the other way, be yourself. There's two ways to get up there. Yeah. You could do like, you know what I mean, the, the dirty world, the good way, but still the good way. No bootleg. You got any advice like for like, young DJs especially? Uh, do you know what? Um, <laughs> I think they're like is, is there a lot of clubs now sort of thing with like you, like younger people DJing and what youth clubs and stuff yeah like stuff yeah like there's not not like, such yeah, fully, fully yeah. like yeah, younger people like um, I mean uh, maybe they don't have youth clubs but there is pirate studios yeah. and pirate studios yeah pirate studios yeah, pirate studios. Studios. yeah, 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 yeah that's, yeah. that's like do you know what I mean there's loads of things that like, hopefully we can help 
Like, cause we always want new up and coming people. That's, That's the, the way thing. Going to be forward. Your fan base, you got like, I mean, you got to keep keep pleasing them, and they look up to you, and they start making what you sort of go down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Likewise, thank you very much for having me. No problem, cool. Dean. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> we'll be back soon. Subtle Radio, it's DJ Argues. We're out.